Hey everyone, welcome back to this channel. If you are new, then welcome to this channel. Well, today we're gonna build our first Tikinter project. The project is all about the digital block, which actually shows us the date, time, and even the year. It's something like this one. It is actually showing us the time with seconds, and it is updating life. And it also showing us Saturday and it is also showing us the date, right? So in this way, we're going to build digital clock. So yeah, let's buckle up and start working on it. So for that, I actually created a file called Tikinder Projects where I'm going to store all my Tikinder Projects here. Even if you want to do it, then just create a folder named Tikinder Projects and go and store all your Tikinder Projects here. I'm so excited to build my first Tikinder Project. Let's do it. So yeah, I just created a file called digital.py in Tikinder Projects folder. Let's start doing it. Okay, so in order to create a window, something like this one, the first and foremost thing is we need a Tikinter window. But before that, we need Tikinter module, right? So for that, I'm going to import Tikinter and I'm going to import everything from the Tikinter so that I cannot see any errors about those widgets. So yeah, let's do it. From Tikinter, import everything. Yeah, we imported everything and now it's time to create a window. So for that window equal to there is a function called TK. If you if you're still confused about the basics of the Tikinter, there is a playlist of the Tikinter basics. You can just go there and learn those basics and come here and start building your first project. The link of that playlist will be in the description. You So here window is actually TK. TK is a function which actually creates a window. All right. Now let's create some title. For now, I'm not giving anything. It will be just window.title. If you want, you can give digital clock like this. Mm. Digital clock. And here, we'll give some geometry so that it looks something like this one. Like, it must be at this size. Alright. So, uh, let's give, for example, width 440 and height 180. For now let's see how it looks so window dot geometry four forty by one eighty okay now we created a window we gave some title and we organized it with good width and height this is width and this is height it's time to see this window right so we're gonna do window dot main loop which runs for us until we close the window let's see how it looks mm, a basic digital clock okay we have a window of this size it's looking good. If you want, you can even decrease this size. But now let's keep. Yeah, I think it's actually resizable, right? We want it to be stable, like this one. See, it's looking good, right? It's it's not resizable. It just looks like this. Okay, for that we can use window dot resizable. So window dot resizable, and width will be false. height also will be false yeah, if you rerun it I think this time it's not gonna change it will be stable yeah you have to use resizable method for this one okay we have something which is decent and it's looking good and we need this background color must be white right Okay, let's pick some colors so that we are gonna use those colors. Okay, when it comes to this one, we actually need white color and one red color, right? We can just create some white color and red color. If you want some cool interesting colors to build your basic digital clock, then you can go to Google and you can go to color picker and yeah, you can just search for the colors that you like and play with them and yeah, use them. For now, I'm just going to use two colors, which is white and which is red. Okay, so which will be background color, BG color. I'll just give BC so that it is actually background color, which will be white. And one foreground color, which will be red. I don't know the hash code for red. So I'm gonna use color picker. 
something like this one okay let's use this one copy paste now the window color will be white right so window dot configure bg color will be bc and then let's rerun i think we have to close this one hmm. okay that's pretty cool okay hmm. now we have a cool window now we need two labels right when it comes to here we need two labels one is for this digital clock and one is for this one so let's create two interesting labels also let's give command as windows configuration mm -hmm. and now it's time to create two interesting labels okay let's create two labels the first label will show the time right exactly the time so l1 equal to there's a class called label window as parameter and text let's keep some text for now so that we can change this as time goes on i'm gonna change the text as time goes on for now the time is actually 12 49 so 12 49 so give some seconds for example five seconds and yeah give some font font will be arial and the size will be 80 for now okay i forgot to give equal here okay and yeah let's see how it looks there's nothing right because i just created a label but i didn't place it okay let me place it i'm gonna use grid geometry manager for placing l1 dot grid um row will be zero column will be zero column okay close this previous window and yeah see this one uh, okay it's looking good it's good but there is some background color which is irritating right let's change this background color let's see hmm okay that's good we have something that is actually showing here and that is actually the time but this is not updating i'm gonna tell you how are we going to do that that's pretty interesting okay so now we have label one and let's create a label two like this one here it will show saturday as today is saturday it will show saturday here and it will show the current date and exact date okay let's do it i'm gonna copy this one and create label to use in the same code this will be l2 and here the text changes from date time to saturday okay and the date is actually 22 1 2022 20, all right now let's see close this one okay so by this i understood that i have to change the font from 80 to 20. so we have to keep this under this one so for that the row will be one and the column will be still zero all right let's do it row will be one column will be zero hmm. And yeah, we have this one, something which is decent looking good. But I don't want this font. I have to change this font, right? Because this font must look like this one, a digital clock. See, it's looking good. So we need something like this one. So how to change this font then? We don't know the font of this digital clock. So in order to get a digital clock format, in order to get a font, something that looks like a digital clock, I'm actually following a website where they have some fonts of digital clocks. So 
what you have to do is just download here just tap this download button you will get a zip file where you will be having some fonts of digital uh, clock and yeah you can use uh, one of them and i'm actually using digital 7.etf wait let me show you this one digital 7.etf and i'm gonna use this file as to change the font of our digital clock okay for that what i'm going to do is i'm gonna extract these files in our tkinter project and i'm gonna use them so here we have all the fonts that we have extracted i'm just gonna use 7.etf file for now to change this font okay in order to implement this digital 7.etf for that first we have to import this file right so in order to import this file we need a module that must handle this file so for that there is a module called pyglet which actually handles the fonts that we're gonna use in this project so i'm gonna import that pyglet pyglet is actually not pre-installed you just have to install so for that use command pip install pyglet okay so i'm gonna import pyglet Yeah, I imported Pyglet and now it's time for Pyglet to handle the font file that I'm going to give. So what I'm going to do is Pyglet dot font dot add file. Just give the name of the font file that we have, which is digital 7 dot tdf. So this gonna handle our font file. So now we're gonna implement this font in here. I'm gonna just give digital seven. I think this will work. And give font size as 20 and this will be 20 and this will be 80. Let's see whether it will work or not. We have to close this one. Uh, yeah, it's working. It's looking almost like a digital clock, right? Because we have to uh, make it a digital clock. It's not exactly a digital clock, but yeah, the font exactly looks like a digital clock. So I'm going to use this font for this one. Now it's time to update. And yeah, let's give some padding here so that it looks good. And also we're going to keep this uh, two labels to stick here itself. I'm going to make some changes to this geometry as well. Let's give this geometry from 440 to 330 and this will be 150. Let's see how this one looks. Close this one and rerun it. It's looking better. So I'm going to use this geometry so that it looks better. Now I'm going to give some padding so that it looks a bit better. So for that, pad x equal to 1. I think 1 is not working. Let's give 5. Hmm. Yeah, it's looking better. Some gap here. It's better than before. Okay. Pad x equal to 5. Mm. And yeah, let's keep this one like this for now. And yeah, you can even give... There is a parameter called sticky. Sticky equal to northwest. Northwest. And yeah, we'll do the same here. I think you understood why I gave sticky here. See, uh, I think you'll understand if I give this resizable true um, with to true and height also to true so that you guys can understand exactly what is this sticky doing here. Okay. Okay, now I think this is resizable, right? Okay, what is this sticky actually doing is though the size of this window changes, it will stick to northwest side of that interface, okay? That's what it is doing exactly. I hope you understood how exactly sticky is working. I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna make it non-resizable. False and false. I'm done. Let's close this one. And read on this one 
and yeah give some padding to saturday as well so that it looks better pad x equal to 5 pixels away from the border hmm yeah it's it's looking better okay so now we need a clock that must be alive and that must update the time each and every second for us so what am i going to do is i'm going to create a function called clock so let's do it create a clock a digital clock and now what am i going to do is i'm gonna import the current date and time of today the live date and time so in order to get this live date and time there is a module called date time which actually helps us to extract the exact date and time so let's import that one you don't have to install it's pre-installed import date time module from date time we need date time module okay so from date time import date time so now we need exact today's time right so for that i'm gonna create a variable and for that date time dot now so this now actually is from this date time module and if we call this now what is it doing is it is actually getting us the current date for us current date and time for us wait let me show you print time and if you run this one here i didn't call the function right i have to call this function so if you call this function and if you rerun this one see here we, you can see right we have date and we have the current time with milliseconds as well so this is what it's actually extracting so in this way data module exactly works so now we need time and we need hour we need weekday we need month we need year right we need all these things if you see this one we need this time we need a weekday and we need a date right so what i'm going to do is in order to get this exact time hover i'm going to create a variable called hover equal to time dot strf time hover minute and seconds mm, okay if you see this one what happens let's rerun this one and let's see what's going on here see here i got r minutes and even seconds you're getting my point it's one nine right now and it is nine minutes and 43 seconds so 1943 you can even change from 9143 you can even you know replace this from h to m m to s you can just replace this things and you can play with it and these are actually the format specifiers of the time and this strf time is actually converting the time from time to string it is actually converting the time to string okay and this is actually uh, from where we are getting this time from where we are getting this 1943 we are getting this from this time variable and this time variable storing the current date and time date time dot now is actually giving us the current date and time and it is a live date and time so this in this way this date time module exactly works okay so now what's going on here is here we are getting the current date and time and this is actually storing in this variable called time from this time we are actually extracting just the r that we need okay so in this way we are extracting now we got time if you want you can even play with this one if you want more about date time then yeah the link will be in the description about date time you can just go there 
if you want you can extract according to those format specifiers so for now i am using these things because i need these things in the digital clock you can even change the format of the digital clock based on changing this format specifiers so for now i'm just using these things now i need weekday right so week i'm gonna create a variable called weekday time dot strf time which converts time to string and from time i want actually the day so for that there is a format specifier called capital a this actually extracts the weekday if you see here if you read on this one hmm, saturday if you want just sat you can just give i think small a it works in this way it works right see sat just sat if you want just sat you can just use small a if you want capital just complete saturday you can just use capital a it depends if you want you can use in this way and yeah all these format specifiers will be over there in that block you can just go there and play according to them okay now we have weekday i want year as well and i want month as well and i want exact day as well exact time of that day right so day equal to time dot day what is this then to close this one and yeah this day is actually giving us the exact day of like today's day is 22 right so it's actually giving us the exact day okay i got day i need month so for that month equal to time dot str time for month the format specifier is this one b Let's see whether it's working or not. Close this one. Free run. Yeah, I, I'm just getting Jan. If you want January, you can just give capital B. Okay. Hmm. You can get January from here. I want year. So year equal to time dot strf time for year format specifier is this one. Hmm, I got year as well. I got date, I got hour, I got weekday, I got day, month, year. I got I have everything now. Now I have to configure the label that I have. I have to change the text of this label from this time. Like this is just for demo. This one is actually we kept just for demo, right? But we need a time that is live and it must update for every second. So for that, we have to configure this label. How are we going to do that? For that, you know, right? Label dot configure, L1 dot configure, L1 dot configure, text equal to R. The thing is we need R, right? The first one label will be actually R. So it will be R. Okay, and yeah, if you run this one, and here you are calling this clock, right? Ah, see here we got R, but we need the time as well. Okay, let's give 500 for now. So now we have this the time that we need exactly like it's exactly one seven with four seconds for now we're gonna change this one like it will update for us every single time but before that we have to configure label two as well so let's do it so 
l2 dot configure text equal to weekday weekday let's give some space plus a string of day because we need it, it in exact date format right so that's what i'm trying to do here str we need month and string and we need year we can just concatenate string right there is something wrong here what is that okay i think this one let's see Okay, I got two things, Saturday 22, which is day, okay, which is Saturday, January, which is month and year. Okay, let's change it to Jan, let's change it to Jan, okay, for that I'm gonna just give small b here, and if we rerun it, hmm. It's looking better. Let's give some more space. Hmm. Far more better. Okay. Mm, let me give padding. Okay. Now it's looking better. Hmm. Now what are we going to do is we are done with this one. Now we have to update this every single second. Every single second we need it to get updated for us. So what are we going to do is for every 200 milliseconds we are going to call this clock method and it's going to update for every 200 milliseconds that's actually equal to a second. Okay, let's do it. We just need to update label 1, right? So label one dot after there's a method called after in that for every 200 seconds milliseconds we are going to call clock yeah done now if we rerun it it's gonna update every second for us yeah we are almost done with this digital clock the thing is we have to change this foreground color so for that i'm gonna use foreground color red so foreground color is equal to foreground color same thing goes here foreground color is equal to foreground color hmm. yeah done if you want you can even use the other colors as well for now i'm just gonna use these two colors yeah, we are done with this digital clock. It's looking pretty cool, right? It's pretty simple. You just have to use. First, we are going to import tkinter module. Later, we're going to create two labels here. One is for time and the one is for day and date. It actually created a clock which actually works on time. So here we actually use date time module which actually extracts the current date and time for us. And we are going to configure according to our needs. If you want, if you want to learn about daytime more, then yeah, the link of the blog will be in the description. You can just go there and check it out and learn more. And yeah, you can even change this format specifiers according to your needs. And once we are done with this thing, magical step is this one. There is a method called after. And for every 200 milliseconds, we are calling this clock function again and again. And this clock function is updating the time and date, everything for us. And this is happening in 200 milliseconds. And we are seeing the time changing for every second. So yeah, in this way, digital clock exactly works. And we used modules like Tkinter, Pikelet. Pikelet is the thing which handles the font. Here we need digital clock font, right? So for that... 
I used Pyglet, which actually imported this digital 7.ttf file for us. And we used this font here in the labels, in font variable or parameter. Okay. So yeah, we are done with this one. In the next video, I'll be back with one more interesting Tikinter project for you guys. And yeah, we'll have fun over there by building some more interesting cool stuff. If you like this video, then hit that cute little like button. And if you didn't subscribe to this channel, then, then what are you waiting for? Then just go there and tap the red button over there so that you'll never miss an update from us. See you in the next video.